Hi, my name is Kenny Kerr, and in this demo, I'm going to show you how modern C++ for the Windows runtime makes it easy to write apps for the new Windows Universal platform with standard C++. Here's a simple app. I can create squares by holding down the control key and clicking with a mouse. I can move them around simply by dragging. As each square is selected, it moves to the top of the pile. I can even change the DPI scaling and the squares will automatically adapt to the logical DPI for the display. Now how long do you think it would take to write such an app from scratch? With XAML, perhaps a half an hour? What if we didn't use XAML? An hour or two with your favorite rendering engine? What if you had to do it in C++? A few weeks, perhaps? What if I told you that you could write this in under 15 minutes using just standard C++ and the new Windows Composition API? Don't believe me? Let's take a look. I'll start by generating the modern C++ library for the Windows runtime. You don't have to do this every time, but it's a good opportunity for me to show you where the library comes from. You can see that I only have the modern compiler here in my temp folder. If I run it with the library command, then it will build a language projection for the entire Windows SDK. But for this example, I'm going to create a frameworkless app, an app that doesn't rely on XAML, so I can actually create a smaller library by including just the namespaces I care about. The core application framework and the Windows Composition API. Right. Now you can see that there's a modern header, as well as a modern folder containing a set of headers that this modern header ultimately includes. Next, I'll create a Windows Universal app project. Modern just created a Windows Universal project called Blocks that includes the modern library we just generated. And let's fire it up. So there isn't much here, but if I open up the main source file, you can see that there's the essential scaffolding for any Windows Universal app. WinMain calls core applications static run method given an implementation of the iFramework view source interface. The view source just needs to return an implementation of iFramework view from its create view method. And it's the view that represents the lifetime of the Universal app iFramework view has a number of methods that you may implement, but it's set window where it gets interesting, since that's where you get a hold of the core window and you can start putting things together. Obviously, this is all just standard ISO C++, but it's also modern C++. There's no pointers, no reference counting, or other weird things like hats. Now, the first thing I tend to do is to ensure that I've handled DPI scaling. DPI scaling information is embodied in this display information class, among other things, which can be found in the graphics display namespace. Now I'm going to use the Windows Composition API for rendering, and this API does not handle DPI scaling directly, so I'll need to keep track of this myself. I can then initialize this value at the top of the setWindow method. I can then use that for any initial scaling as I prepare my graphical assets. But before I can create any visuals, I need to get myself a compositor. This comes courtesy of the UI composition namespace. Now it's no coincidence that I've created the compositor here in my set window method. The compositor can only be created once the core dispatcher is available, which only happens when the core window has been created. So it's the compositor that acts as the factory for visuals, and I'll start by creating the root visual. There are a variety of different kinds of visuals, and the container visual is just a simple visual that can have children, but not much else. In this case, that's all I need. If I had wanted a particular background color for my window, I might have created a solid color visual, but then I'd also have to worry about its size as the window is resized. This will just give me a blank or white window background on which I can add child visuals. 
Of course, there's nothing telling the compositor that this visual is in any way associated with my window. For that, I need to create a composition target. It's my job to keep this reference alive. I can then go ahead and set the root visual for the window by associating it with the composition target. And finally, I'll hold on to a reference to the root visual's children collection. This is the collection of visuals I'll be manipulating as part of my app's interaction with the user. Now it's time to add a few events, and first up is the DPI changed event. First, I'll update our DPI member variable. I'll then resize the visuals to match. But I'll leave the implementation for the moment. The next event we need to handle is the pointer pressed event. I need to get the logical position from the event args. Point is found in the foundation namespace. And now I can either add a visual if the control key is held or select a visual. Virtual key modifiers hails from the system namespace. Now holding down the control key should add a visual. Otherwise we'll select the visual. And then the definitions. And let's add some visuals. Again, it's the compositor's job to create visuals and I can get a reference to it via the children collection. Practically, every composition object has a compositor property that may be used to retrieve this compositor. I'll then create a solid color visual. And let's give the visuals some variety of colors. Color is a symbol ARGB structure, alpha followed by red, green, and blue in that order. Color itself is defined in the UI namespace. And I'll just paste in a color palette to use. Now just to produce a bit of variety, I'll cycle through this array as new visuals are added. That's the last index and then the next. And then I'll set the visuals color accordingly. Next, I need to set the visual size, and I'll just use a fixed block size, which I'll define as a constant. But I'll make sure that this is treated as logical pixels so that it scales nicely on high DPI displays. And to do that, I'll use a pair of helper functions to convert between logical and physical pixels. and then logical to physical. The equations are quite simple. Physical to logical, and then logical to physical converts it back. Now back down in the add visual method, I can set the size of the new visual based on the logical block size and converted to physical pixels. 
The visual size is expressed with a vector2 structure defined in the foundation numerics namespace. And then I'll simply use the current DPI scaling factor to compute the size. That's the x. And the y. I'll then position the visual around the pointer position. Again, being careful to consider DPI scaling. And finally, I can add the newly created visual at the top of the root visual's children. That way, it should appear in front of any existing visuals. And let's give it a try. And sure enough, if I hold the control key, I can add a bunch of blocks with a variety of colors. Now, what about moving visuals around? The hardest part is hit testing to determine which visual is the topmost visual under the pointer position. In the select visual method, I'll start by converting the pointer event's logical position to physical coordinates, since that's what the composition API deals with. I can efficiently compare this physical position with all of the visual's children in the collection. Now heat testing a rectangle is straightforward, I just need the visual's offset and size. I can then use this to compare against the pointer position and check the edges. That's the left edge, and the right edge, the top, and the bottom. Assuming I have a hit, I'll keep track of the selected visual. I can then use this in subsequent pointer moved events. And while I'm here, I'll add an offset variable to provide natural dragging motion regardless of where the pointer lands with respect to the visual. I can then update both of these back in my select visual loop. And here I'll store this offset in logical pixels again. And then I can simply check whether a visual was actually selected. And if so, move it to the top of the visual collection. We first remove it. And then insert it at the top. Now you might be thinking that I forgot to break out of that for loop once a visual was selected. The trouble is that the visual collection returns elements in bottom to top order, so hit testing requires the entire collection to be traversed. The first selected visual might actually be underneath a subsequent visual that is higher up in visual appearance. Now for some more events. We've handled DPI changes, adding and selecting visuals. Now let's handle pointer moved events to actually move a selected visual. and I'll only bother if a visual is actually selected. Of course, that means I also need to release any selected visual. Something like this. Now inside the pointer moved event handler, and assuming a visual is selected, I'll start by getting the new pointer position.
and then update the selected visuals offset. Again, taking care to adjust for DPI scaling. And let's take it for a spin. And there are some squares, and now I can drag them around. Neat. Finally, let's deal with a case where the DPI scaling factor changes while the app is running, perhaps when the user docks a tablet or manually adjusts the display settings. Here in the DPI changed event handler, I'm already calling out the resize visuals method. Let's now provide a reasonable implementation. I'll go ahead and update each visual. Now there are two aspects to this, the physical size and the relative offset. Let's deal with the offset first. I want to scale the visuals relative to their center points, so I'll first need to get the existing physical offset and size. I can then update the offset. Starting with a physical center point. And subtracting half of the new logical block size. And then let's update the physical size. And let's give it a try. I'm going to launch this on my larger display so we can actually play with a DPI scaling. I'll add a few squares. And I'll go ahead and adjust the DPI scaling for this monitor. That's 125%, 150%, 200%. And back down. And just like that, the blocks are automatically rendered to match. Now this is modern C++ for Windows.